please forgive me. I just want my family back. Mr. Jackson stood in his office looking out the window. It was happening again. The women were out of control and it was all because of Ferguson. Two women brutally killed in the same week. The freak's family now causing chaos in Wentworth. For the first time, he began to doubt himself. Maybe he wasn't the right person to be governor of the prison. Will lowered his head and felt his face getting hot. He grabbed a glass and he threw it across the room. As the glass fell, there was a knock on the door. Vera walked in before Will could say anything. She'd heard the glass break from outside the door. Will? What's going on in here? <sighs> Nothing. My glass. It slipped out of my hands. Must have been some slip. There's broken glass everywhere. Yeah, it's fine. I'll clean it up later. Is, uh, is Gracie okay? Grace? Yeah, your daughter, Grace. That's why you were out yesterday? Grace wasn't feeling well? Oh, right, right. Oh, my poor Gracie. She felt a bit warm and was fussing. Just thought I'd stay home and keep an eye on her. She's all better now. Good. Glad to hear that. I heard about Cassie. Jesus. Eighteen years old. What a shame. Irina's convinced it was Cassie who killed Sasha. But I'm not so sure. I don't think she did it, Vera. Did she have a motive? No. She had no history with the freak and she'd just been let out of the slop. She had no idea Sasha was even in Wentworth. It could have been anyone, Will. I know. Hey, have you heard from Jake? He's been out three days in a row. Figured he was with you and Gracie. What? I... I... No, no, no. I haven't spoken to him. Maybe he's sick. Did he call in sick? No. I've been calling him at home and on his mobile. No answer at home, and his mobile goes straight to voicemail. I figured he was with you and Gracie. Well, you know Jake. He probably had a wild weekend and needs some extra time to recover. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna swing by his house after work and check on him. No! I mean, no, don't, Will. You have enough on your plate. I'll go. Okay, great. Thanks, Vera. The freak decided to rent a house for a month to lay low, stay out of sight, until she could figure out what her next move was going to be. She chose Frankston. No one would go looking for her there. She'd be safe. At least for a little while. Good morning, Australia. We are coming to you live from Wentworth Correctional Center, where there has been yet another murder. Prisoner Cassie Ray was beaten to death in what's become the second death in the prison within one week. Cassie had just been transferred to Wentworth from Mockridge Juvenile Detention Center upon turning 18. Her death comes after a string of violence that has plagued Wentworth for the past several months. Sasha Malenkovic, head of the Malenkovic crime family, was brutally murdered earlier this week. Her twin sister, John Ferguson, is believed to have been killed during the Wentworth bombing. Officials in the prison have yet to give a statement. This is Maria Fernandez Guadalupe del Torro reporting live from Wentworth. Governor Jackson, <sighs> you were never the man for the job. Weakling, Sasha's dead because of your incompetence. You will. I called you all in for this meeting to discuss a few things. As we all know, the violence in this prison has caught an out of hand. I ended the lockdown not because I wanted to, but because I was advised to, and clearly that was the wrong decision. Now, I won't be reinstating the lockdown, but I will be hiring more guards. Extra guards will be assigned to the yard as well as the laundry room. I'm hoping the extra security will deter the women from committing any more acts of violence against each other. Next on the agenda is the new music program I've created. Starting today, the women will have access to musical instruments.
It's been proven that music helps the prisoners to stay calm, and it acts as a form of therapy, musical therapy. It's worked in other prisons I've worked in. Recidivism rates dropped dramatically in several prisons throughout Australia after this music program began. I believe it'll help. And finally, I'd like to introduce you all to Elsie Moore, Wentworth's new psychologist. She'll be working in the psych unit as well with the other inmates. Ms. Miles, make an announcement today after lunch, letting the women know they can begin setting up appointments to have therapy sessions with Mrs. Moore. Hello, everyone. I would just like to say that it is an honor to be working here. Wentworth is one of the best prisons in the country, and I will do all that I can to help the women better themselves and become productive members of society. I would like to thank Miss Davidson for the opportunity to be a part of the Wentworth staff. I won't let you down, Miss Davidson. Oh, thank you, Miss Moore. I'm certain you'll be a great addition to the staff. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, where the hell is Jake? He's been out for days. How about we let Mr. Jackson worry about the whereabouts of his staff, Miss Miles? All right, then. If there are no further questions, this meeting is over. You can all get back to work now. After the staff meeting, everyone got back to work. Everyone except for Vera. She'd locked herself in her office. She just needed a minute to get herself together. Hearing Linda say Jake's name caught her off guard. She still couldn't believe what she'd done. Out in the halls, Boomer had just gotten off the phone with Gavin when she heard Frankie call her name. Hey, Booms, you got a minute? Yeah, what's up? I was looking over your file and I have some questions. Think you can come by my office this hour? Your office? Sure thing, Ms. Doyle. Oi, you hear? Lou Kelly's back. Yeah, I heard. You know, she's all right. She's not... You can't trust her, Booms. No, I know. It's just... She done a real nice thing for me and the bub, eh? Well, if she tries to mess with the other, you tell me and I'll take care of it. Oh, no, Frankie. You can't start fighting with Lou again. She's even crazier than before. I mean, I don't think she'll hurt me or the bubba, but you? That's exactly why I'm telling you not to trust her, Booms. No matter how many nice things she does for you, all right? You cannot trust her. Yeah, all right. Frankie headed on back to her office when suddenly Bridget stopped her. Hey, I've been looking for you all over. I need to talk to you. Come on, we can talk in my office. As they walked to Frankie's office, Erica watched them from across the hall. She hated seeing Frankie with Bridget. Frankie was supposed to be hers. If it wasn't for me killing Jax, Erica would have never been fired. <laughs> her getting fired is what made her leave, and her time away from Frankie just made it clear how what she wanted. It wasn't women Erica lusted for. It was Frankie. No other woman would do. It was Frankie or no one. And one way or another, Erica always got what she wanted. Bridget walked into Frankie's office and she shut the door. As soon as that door was closed, Frankie grabbed Bridget and they kissed. They hugged each other for a minute and then Bridget spoke. Irina's in the slot. She beat Cassie's head in. Frankie, it was horrible. Sasha's dead. Irina's in the slot. Maybe now they won't go through with trying to have you killed. Irina needed her mother's help on the outside to get it done and now she's gone, so... No. Don't let your guard down, Gage. Irina's gonna be counting on that. Sasha's gone, which means Irina is in charge, even if she's stuck in here. Promise me you'll be careful, Frankie. Irina's crazy. Frankie and Bridget hugged once again and then began to kiss. And in that moment, Erica barged in and saw them kissing. Oh my gosh, I'm so s sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Didn't your mother ever teach you not before you went to a room? Gage, <clears throat> don't. My apologies, Miss Westfall. I'll make sure to knock next time. Frankie, when you're finished here, I need to speak with you in my office. It's important. I'll order us some lunch and we can eat while we talk. Yeah, okay, great. I'll be waiting for you in my office. What are you doing about Irina? Gage. No, it's okay, Frankie. Bridget, it's gonna be all right. Frankie's in good hands. Don't worry, I'll keep her safe. Bridget's blood began to boil. Who the 
fuck did this bitch think she was talking to? Don't worry, I'll keep her safe. What in the hell did she mean by that? Bridget did not trust Erica at all. She knew she was after Frankie. Over in the visiting area, Dr. Miller sat waiting for Mila to be brought in. He was furious. Someone in Wentworth had killed his sister and ruined everything. With Sasha dead, he'd never get the satisfaction of killing her himself. Sasha's plan to break the girls out of prison was his only chance to rescue Mila. Now she was going to have to serve her time. There was nothing more he could do. Never had he felt so useless. His one and only daughter was in Wentworth's hands now. Just then, he saw Mila walking towards him. Mila, are you okay? I am fine. I can't believe this happened. Do they know who did it? Why did you not tell me I had an aunt? An aunt? What? What, what do you mean? Oh, spare me the dramatics, Papa. Your sister, Aunt Sasha's twin. What is her name? The freak. This Joan Ferguson. What? Are you trying to tell me you did not know? Who told you Joan Ferguson is Sasha's twin? Mr. Jackson questioned Irina and I. He wanted to know if we knew her, but we did not, clearly. And then when Aunt Sasha got here, she, she told us it was true. You have another sister. <laughs> but you'll never get to meet her. Because she's dead. They say she was killed when that Lou Kelly blew up the prison. What a pity, Papa. You are an only child now. Dr. Miller couldn't believe what he was hearing. The freak was his sister? Dr. Miller thought for a second and then he realized what this meant. Two sisters, both of them dead. This was turning out to be a good day after all. With both Joan and Sasha dead, there was no one standing in his way. He was the heir now. Right then and there, he knew what he had to do. He would make things right with his mother and take over as head of the Milenkovich crime family with his daughter by his side. You know, Mila, I wasn't there for you when it mattered, but I'm here now, and I will never abandon you again. You and I are the future of our family, and when you're ready, you'll take care of Irina, and then it'll just be us. How you holding up? Like, you really give a shit. I'm probably one of the few people who do, Kelly. Why'd you do it? You were free. I was never free. And now you never will be. Yeah, well, we're both lifers. Except your body gets to go home at night. But your mind, Mr. Jackson? Your mind belongs to Wentworth. That's enough, Kelly. I came here to check on you. Clearly, you're fine. You'll be out in the morning. We'll turn to walk away. And that's when he remembered. Rita. Connors will be turning herself in in the next few days. I know you kidnapped and tried to kill her, Kelly. But once she's back, you need to find a way to put aside your vendetta. Connors is coming back. Yes. And if you do anything to try and hurt her, I will have you put in the protection unit. Permanently. <laughs> you feel strongly about Rita's safety, don't you, Governor? I mean it, Kelly. I won't have any more of your shit. The violence has to stop. If you hurt Rita, you're done. Frankie, I'm glad I caught you. Can I ride with you back to my apartment? My car's got a flat tire. Yeah, sure. Come on. Frankie sat at the table watching Erica with her mouth watering. Whatever Erica had cooked for dinner smelled delicious. Almost as good as her own cooking. Almost. She couldn't wait to eat. Oi, what in the world are you doing? I'm starving. I'm coming, Frankie. Erica came into the dining room and set out several dishes. Thought we'd start with some appetizers first. Mmm, oysters and caviar? Fancy. What's the main dish gonna be? Steak with potatoes and mushrooms. Here, try some of this wine. 
Mm. It's good. Let's eat. The night went on. They ate good food and drank great wine. And before they knew it, they'd finished two bottles of wine. Erica sat at her dining room table, just looking and listening to Frankie. As she gave her all her thoughts on why reality TV shows were part of the downfall of society. She was so beautiful, Erica thought to herself. Her dark hair, her smile. She wanted Frankie. She always had. And she was tired of waiting. Tonight was the night. She wondered to herself how long those mushrooms would take before Frankie finally began to hallucinate. You know, they put you on these shows and promise you the world and in the end they just fuck you, yeah? There's no escaping it. It fucks with your mind. People judge you. You're always just that girl that threw a pan of hot oil on Mike Panese. Frankie, <laughs> look at you. You've gone and gotten yourself all worked up. Frankie began to stare at the curtains. The floral pattern started to change from flowers to sparkling circles of light. She felt weird, but she figured maybe she had too much wine. She kept staring at the lights. They were beautiful. Would you like another glass of wine? Frankie? Frankie? No, I'm good. I've had enough already. Hey, Erica. <laughs> Why are your curtains glowing? Erica? Frankie, why are you calling me by that woman's name? It's me, Bridget. Bridget? Frankie thought as she turned around confused. There was a bright light coming from the kitchen. And there she was. It was Bridget. Gidge? Yeah, babe, it's me. Who else would it be? Frankie walked over to Erica and hugged her. The mushrooms had worked. She was hallucinating. Frankie grabbed Erica's face and they kissed. Erica had waited years to kiss Frankie again. They passionately kissed and stumbled their way into Erica's bedroom. Slowly they undressed each other as Frankie told her how much she loved her. She was so high, she had no clue it was really Erica. Frankie made love to Erica as if it was Bridget. And after Erica came with pleasure, it was her turn to please Frankie. She laid her down and began touching her. Frankie was enjoying every second. She grabbed Erica by the throat and kissed her, and as they pulled away, she gasped. Bridget's face was a distorted, blurred mess. <gasps> Kitch, what's wrong with your face? Frankie's eyes began to gain focus. Bridget's face was becoming clearer and clearer, but the clearer it became, the less it looked like Bridget. She was so confused, then she saw who it was. Erica, what, what are you doing? Get the fuck off me. What the fuck is going on? You, we, uh, I was making love to you. Clearly, but why? No, no, I don't want to know why. This isn't fucking happening. This is a dream, yeah? You said you wanted to make love to me. That's a lie. No, it's not. Can't you remember? I don't want you. I'm in love with Bridget. I was in love with you, Frankie, back then. I couldn't tell you. I didn't know how. But I told you tonight and you said you had feelings for me too. Feelings? For you? Are you fucking insane? I'm getting the fuck out of here. You can't leave, Frankie. What about Irina? She still wants to kill you. I can help you. I can keep you safe. Fuck you, Erica. You drugged me, didn't you? Didn't you? Erica walked over to Frankie and tried to explain, but Frankie punched her right in the face and knocked her to the ground. She looked up at Frankie, blood dripping from her lip, and began to cry. You stay away from me, you fucking sick bitch. You stay the fuck away from Bridget too, or I swear to God, I'll kill you.